looks like we're finally hitting past the 7 p.m. SGT mark here. And it looks like Julian and Aaron have finally joined us. Um, before we begin, I'd like to thank everyone for coming in here today. I think this AMA, our monthly AMA for June, may be the month that we have the most updates to give you guys. So it's going to be a really interesting one. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to introduce our speakers, which is, of course, CEO and co-founder Julian Kwan, alongside with iXwap co-founder Aaron Ong. And before we formally begin this AMA, I'd like to thank everyone again for coming in and listening to us tonight. But most importantly, thank you so much to the iXS community for always believing in the team. And I guess with your belief in us, we're finally going to see that pay off. Um, yeah, so before we begin, I think I'll pass it over to you, Julian and Aaron, if you guys want to give a few words for the community. Cool. Thanks, Gene. Aaron, I'll go first. Maybe I can drop a bit of kind of macro RWA industry stuff, and then um, you can lead us into the uh, product developments platform, develops partnerships um, as well before we get into some Q&A. So thanks, Gene, for putting it on, and, and welcome everybody here. Um, we have a lot more people following um on the recordings than we do who can make this exact time because the ixs community is global um spans across the world we get a lot of great messages every day from um people in all parts of the universe so um hi again um <clears throat> you know i think it's a super 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 interesting time um in the rwa space uh it, we've seen a an explosion of um new projects um which is inevitable um i think there's been um an explosion of um on-chain um action related to treasuries money market funds financial instruments that wall street's using um including the crypto hedge funds um who are investing in these short-term yield bearing instruments to make money between trades they've probably had a big surge of uh, buyers in the last 24, 48 hours with the recent, you know, crypto meltdown on the prices. But what's, I think, exciting for us is that, um, you know, the the platform that we began over 3.5 years ago, I guess, you know, just over three years ago, um, was built for to help all these projects and all these products. Um, once people have a, a real asset an equity token, um, a security token, they can they can start a legal pool and trade on IXWAP. Um, the community might be slightly, um, well, I'll put it this way. When we started IXWAP, we were just focused in on become the Uniswap for real world asset tokens. And that is still, you know, one of our main missions. Um, but what we found for many years was that a lot of the, the real world asset tokens were not of the wrong quality, were in on wrong on, on the wrong protocols didn't have the right teams, didn't actually, you know, what wasn't worth uh, in, in, in buying or investing. And that's where we ended up um, building our launch pad to create. And the launch pad, you know, where you launch your first offering was, was an initially built out of necessity to help create more liquidity pools, so more assets, um, which we, we managed to, to, to pull together. So all of that was the journey of what iXwap became a lot more robust in terms of what it was offering. And now it's moved further all, along that journey to secure all its own licenses and then further along that journey to start to, to launch, um, you know, a lot more real world asset tokens. Again, with the, the same goal of becoming the biggest secondary trading venue that is agnostic to everyone in the space. So anyone who has a real world asset token is welcome on iXwap. We are asset agnostic. We are structure agnostic we don't care what the underlying company vehicle is um and i think that that's one of the big tell signs in the current market that although it sounds like there's loads of projects out there most of them don't have anything if they did they're welcome to come to ix swap and if they don't they haven't come they haven't brought their assets to the platform there's probably two reasons one is that um they don't need secondary trading because it's that not that type of asset and the best example for that is the the treasuries, the on the, uh, the these um, money market funds. They are very liquid. You don't need to buy secondaries. You just go and buy and sell it. So they don't really need the secondary chain. But then they're just one asset class in in many many asset classes in, in the real world asset space. 
The other groups that are all claiming to have launched tokens, then if they have, then why can't we see them? Why aren't they coming to us? Why don't they want secondary trading? Um, and the answer is they probably would like it, but they just don't have much there. But so what that means is that we're starting to see, you know, the RWA, I, I say this about several times a day, but I'll probably repeat it here, that there's a big misunderstanding that RWA tokens, um, RWA utility tokens are the, the reward asset tokens. And that's not correct, right? The utility token of an RWA platform, IXS is the best example in this phone call. It's the native token of our platform. You can use it for benefits, rewards, etc. It itself is not a real world asset token because a real world asset token would be a share of a company, a share of a startup, a tokenized real estate, a tokenized startup, whatever it is, tokenized private credit, etc. So the market over the last this year, you know, let's go back you know, a month or two ago, the RWA utility tokens have been pumping, right? They're the second best performing kind of asset, uh, crypto assets behind meme coins. But what most people don't understand is that the, you know, the purpose of the RWA utility token is to use it on the platform and to use it on the RWA platform. So the Ondo tokens meant to be used on Ondo platform. IXS token meant to be used on IXWAP platform. But so the interesting part about that is that nearly all the RWA uh, platforms that are selling real real world asset tokens today, where you can go and buy a tokenized treasury money market fund, they're not available to all investors. It's only for accredited and institutional investors. So then you have all of these communities seemingly supporting this utility token, but they can't even buy the real world asset token. I think that's a shame. And I think people should learn more about that and should understand that because although everyone's buying and selling crypto and everyone wants to speculate and everyone loves pumping and everyone loves screaming about it, you may as well, if you believe in real world asset industry, you may as well buy a utility token that actually has put utility for you if you can choose that. And our access does because we've built a system where everyone with a photo ID, as in anybody, um, basic, basic, basic KYC, less KYC than you'd find on Binance or Coinbase setting up today. You can buy uh, an equity token of a startup or a fund with one USDT. Therefore, if you support IXS as, as, a to as a utility token, it has real utility for you because you can actually use it on the platform. If you're a retail investor, and I'm not going to pick on Ondo, but they've got a great platform. They're doing very well. It's just different. You buy an Ondo token retail investor, you, you can't buy the actual real asset token. So it doesn't have a use for you other than speculation. Again, speculation is great. That's all part of the industry. But if you can have speculation plus utility, I think that's why I access um, as, as, a, as a token and as a platform is very unique. Um, that aside, you know, I think it's important to, um, to lay out there that you know, we've got, uh, we've been building in this space for three years now, three plus years. That's on the IXWAP side. Some of the team was also working on InvestorX. They were the first builders in RWA space since 2017, 18 in Asia. So we've met this a very long time. Um, I think, you know, it's exciting to see now all different types of um, products coming down to the, to the platform. Um, we have, uh, we're really focused on startups because we believe that tokenizing equity in Web3 and other types of startups is very valuable and never been accessible to retail investors before um, until now. We're, we're, we're working with a lot of venture capital firms and accelerators now, looking to onboard a whole new wave of startups that, that launch on the IXWAP launch pad and they allow everyone to invest, again, with one USDT, one USDC, whatever the, the currency is, and gives real ownership to the community apart from just trying to sell people the ICO, the cryptos, right? So the, 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 point, of, the point of this is that this, is a, this will build a stronger startup because you have a distributed ownership, real ownership, because there's this false narrative that, you know, if, you, if you're in cryptocurrency, you need to buy the utility token, that holds all the value. But if you peel off the layers and you go and look at what's really happening, all the venture capital firms are sitting on the equity side of those protocols, Web3 startups. So they wouldn't be there if there was no value. And so the, the, the point I'm making is we're bringing out a whole new way of raising money for startups by building not just VCs on your cap table and then shilling everyone, you know, you know, your cryptocurrency, give real ownership to your community. That means they will be stronger. They will support that. That will drive the business, whether it's a protocol or a, or a Web3 startup or a service company, whatever it is. And then you can start to couple that together with the tokenization of everything. With If you hold an equity token, you can get access to the ICO, you get a special NFT drop. 
this whole tokenization of everything is finally coming to fruition. And it's much better, I think, more powerful for the startups to have this type of equity cap table. Because the example that I like to give is if you can get a million dollars from one VC, which is what some people do, um, or you could have you know, $100,000 from a VC, it's good to have um, professional investors doing the negotiations, determining the valuations, et cetera. And then you had $900,000, again, from an extreme example, had 900,000 equity holders. So you, you literally sold 900,000 reward asset equity token. Now, instead of having one shareholder trying to help you with the business, you've got 900,000 and one shareholders, right? That's the, that's the thinking that we need to we need to share with everyone. This is going to be really, really exciting. I'm planning on building up my own portfolio of all these kind of really interesting startups. And then, and these and the second most important part is that it, lo- it plugs into the AMM. Then you can start to trade these straight away. So if you think about the old way of investing in startups, it was sign a piece of paper and cross your fingers and wait 10 or 20 years and hopefully get an exit. That's generally how it goes and 99% fail. The new way of doing it is buy a real world asset equity token on IX swap. And then next week when the funding finishes, it's trading. And that's not a one, a zero to one benefit. That's like a hundred times better. So we're going to start to see that a lot of interesting stuff there. A lot of, a lot more we just closed. I think um, the, the, the tokenized vehicle that the coach K, the KOL is going to be driving uh, and in, investing in a whole bunch of gaming tokens and private sales. So that, that, that had a nearly over, I don't know the exact numbers. I think last time it was nearly 400. 400 investors that could invest one US dollar, one USDT, and you can buy a tokenized share of this vehicle, this company that's going to go invest in all these amazing deals. And that is also going to be tradable. And that is now, again, the access for everyone for one dollar real, real world asset token, not just some fluff that everyone can get that you can trade in, in a vehicle, in an investment strategy that people want. Like, if anyone knows anything about investing in crypto, the best deals always go to the KOLs and the influencers. And then, you know, that's the whole point of this, that the investors get to run alongside of that and behind that. And it's instantly tradable versus a normal fund type structure, which could be holding your money for seven, 10, 15 years, like in the traditional finance, that's how long it takes to get out of the VC fund, 15 to 18 years. So that's been happening. The platform people, uh, the team's been building quite furiously. We've been doing uh, a lot of travel around the region. We've got um, some fantastic devs uh, across Asia and a little bit beyond. Um, and I've been going for about 10 minutes. So I think there's a, a ton of updates. Now I'm going to pass the microphone to Aaron. He might give you some actual details about a lot of these updates. And then we can talk about some, um, we can answer some of the questions. Cool. Thanks, Jules. Uh, and thanks, thanks everyone for joining today. Um, yeah, so, so I'll just give you guys a couple of updates. Well, there's a lot of updates um, that's been going on in the last couple of months since we last updated you guys. Um, so let me just start with the incentive program because I've been seeing a lot of questions about it. Um, so we've we've been, I think he, most of the community knows that we are building an, a staking system that's going to be air dropping RWA um, assets uh, that we're launching off IXS. Um, the incentive program that we're, bu- we're building now, um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, yes, the staking will be one part of it, uh, which is being built right now, uh, but there's also an MLM system that's going to be coming along with that. Um, and that will be due in about one and a half months. That uh, That's just phase one of the um, of the build-up for the incentive program. Uh, the phase two for the incentive program is actually uh, connecting it to uh, platforms like Zeely and TaskOn, where users can start um, completing on-chain tasks and start accumulating points and start um, receiving rewards, rewards from the access platform. Um, so that, that's going to be, I guess, quite important for us to drive uh, user engagement and user acquisition on the platform. Um, and beyond that, um, I guess you guys have also been seeing, we've been teasing base quite a fair bit. Uh, there's been a lot of development um, going on. We've actually finished um, building a bridge and we've also finished building uh, a liquidity bootstrapping uh, platform similar to Ford Foundry. Uh, both of those platforms are going under uh, UAT at the moment. Um, once the, I guess, the internal UAT is done, we're going to be doing a, a bug bounty for both those platforms um, so you guys can test it out uh, before we do the, the whole base migration. So the, the base migration is going to be c- coming in a couple couple of different parts. Um, the reason why we're actually delaying it for for a while is that we want the we want the staking and the center system to be up and running before we we launch the, the bridge onto base. And um, really, the main reason for that is that we don't want to build a bridge and then you guys bridge your assets across and then there's nothing to do there. Um, it's like tokenization to nothing again. 
uh, which doesn't add any value. Um, so we want this staking system up and ready uh, by the time we do the migration. And hopefully um, the, the launch pad will be migrated across at the same time, uh, depending on, I guess, the, the dev um, uh, development time that they have right now, because there's still, still a bunch of stuff going on. Um, so other than, I guess, other than the, the base migration, um, there are a couple of build outs that's happening at the moment as well. Um, I think we've, we've spoke, spoken about a couple of different SaaS developments that's happening. Um, the one of the SaaS development is about to get completed already, and that's that's for a real estate group out of, out of Thailand. Um, we have another two two contracts signed already for SaaS development, so that's going to come right after, um, I guess, right after this this current SaaS build is getting built out. Um, the, the SaaS the SaaS build outs um, and how it works is that the the clients are actually using um, our backend engine, meaning our compliance, uh, our tech. Um, and our legal framework for for the platform and our sort of investment documentation as well. Um, and simply what they're doing is that they are changing the UI and the front end of IXOP and they, they're still using the exact same facilities. So um, the, the big difference between their platform, what their platform look like in ours is that their platforms will only be able to see their deals, but IXS main platform will be seeing all the deals from all the platforms and we're aggregating um, basically all the deals and all the decks pools across everything. So hopefully once uh, I guess these SaaS clients start building out their platforms to so start seeing a large, larger amount of issuances and Dex trading pools in the platform as well. Um, so that's that's on the SaaS side. Um, on the sales side, uh, not sure if you guys have seen, but we closed the CKGP deal yesterday. Uh, it took us a little bit of time, but we finally got it closed. Um, raised half a million dollars in the platform. So that's pretty much we've doubled our TVL uh, in just that one deal. Um, we are hopefully going to see a lot more deals coming through as well um, as, as it progresses. I, I think um, we've mentioned this before as well. When we first started um, the launch pad, we were more focused on getting every single deal successful. Uh, but going forward, um, we're going to be acting more as a, a platform for the issuers to to launch any deal they want off the platform. They'll be in charge of their raise. We'll provide the tech, we'll provide the licenses, we'll provide um, marketing support, um, but we won't be actively soliciting for any of these deals. So hopefully, Going forward, you'll be seeing a lot more deals in the platform. Uh, this month alone, you'll probably see another two more deals coming out. Uh, one which is just launched today. It's a tokenized deal uh, for um, a cask of wine. Uh, and that, that's with a Korean group that we've been speaking to for almost, I guess, half a year already right now. Um, there's going to be another launch that's coming out, I guess, in, a, in two weeks' time in the platform. That's going to be tokenized content of a um, of Korean IP, uh, sorry, tokenized IP content of Korean social media and YouTube channels. Uh, that one sounds quite, uh, it's actually quite interesting as well. Um, and I guess beyond that, um, we are pushing quite hard on uh, user acquisition on, I guess, our core markets. I mean, you guys have seen that we've been pushing quite hard in Korea, Philippines, and Vietnam. Um, and we are currently formulating plans to actually go push a lot harder on the user acquisition side. We, we did a test run with the CKGP deal and I, I felt that was quite successful. Uh, we, we had about 400 investors that went to that deal, uh, which is way more than any VC would probably get when they first um, launch launch any deals themselves. Uh, so that's, that's been quite positive um, for us thus far. Um, I think those are the major updates from my side. Um, Drew, do, 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 do you think I missed out on anything else? Well, I just touched base on a few of the important ones. Um, the LBP um, liquidity bootstrapping pool kind of mechanism has has come to life this cycle, I guess. Um, it was there's a few elements to it. <clears throat> I think what's valuable for it is it creates more of a fair launch system um, without the fun and games of you know seed rounds, pre seed, pre private, pre private, and all these deals where you know the general crypto community just is the exit liquidity for the bigger guys at the front so we've developed the first lbp structures for real world asset tokens so fjord foundry has it they're not allowed to launch equity tokens it's just crypto right no securities um so i'm super excited to see how this kind of rolls out um it also allows us to create um create pools faster quicker um which i think is really really uh, valuable and will play out over time. Um, there, there is a ton of people. I'd also like to say, you know, that there's a ton of people, um, as we all know, in crypto who will say anything and lie through their teeth. Uh, I'm not going to name specific people because then other communities lose their marbles. But um, 
we, we are um, we are the only group that um, that I'm aware of, especially in 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 our industry here, that is uh, invested by Coinbase, um, and we've got our base rollout coming now, which is very interesting. Why I think base is and and, and if you're a professional investor, you never ever partner or invest in two platforms in the same space next to each other. It makes zero sense. It never happens. If anyone else is saying that, it just shows that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. That aside, base to me has been very, very interesting. Um, if anyone saw the Coinbase um, notes from the, the event they did last week, Brian Armstrong said that base is the most exciting thing um, Coinbase is working on and Coinbase is working on a lot of different things. But I was just excited when I heard about base a while ago as well, because when you think about um, layer two solutions, um, most of them, if not all of them, have been built via the standard ICO token launch. Um, and when the incentives for the founders are gone, i.e. they've sold all their tokens, um, so goes the solution, generally speaking. So uh, we originally started on base and polygon and, and polygon, I think, you know, testnet doesn't even really work properly today. Um, and why base is different is there's no token yet, but it's purely built by Coinbase as part of the rails to make everything easier for everyone buying and selling everything, right? Coinbase wallets, Coinbase protocols, a lot easier to convince um, big investors if you issue a real world asset on a protocol that Coinbase built, it's probably going to be in brackets, safer, easier to understand, better than whatever, uh, some other random one they don't understand. So the the, the, the key to, to this is that this infrastructure is stitching it together to, to bring more of the web to UX, UI user interface to all the web three assets, because whether you're, you, know, you love or hate web three UX, UI, it's it's a journey and it's often difficult for people to understand. Um, and, and, in, and I'm talking about normal people. I'm not talking about people that sit there trading crypto for 25 hours a day. So you need to have more basic uh, web to experience to bring on a lot more people a lot more rapidly. At the end of the day, to me, it doesn't really matter. Like how you click a button this way or that way, to me, literally, I don't care make it as easy as possible for people to get more people involved. And then it's really more about the excitement of what's happening around, around all the assets. So I think that that is, is a telling sign. And we were, we were early out in front with this and we're not just putting out some blase statement about we're going to base, like we're building it throughout our whole systems, which is, um, um, which is really exciting and legitimate, but we still stay protocol agnostic because these technologies change over time. It's a great example now. Base wasn't around before. Polygon was dominating and now it's flipping. It's doing a flipping. So we stay kind of agnostic on that front, but we keep looking at building out like the most interesting and exciting path forward. Probably the most frustrating part for iXwap is that, you know, previously people used to say it was ahead of its time. Um, that's not true. Um, if you, if, if it would have been ahead of its time if we weren't, if we, we didn't see everything we've seen the real things going on in the real world asset space this year, because at the end of the day, um, you know, all, all the, the, the reality is, is that, you know, Uniswap and FTX and Binance and all the big DeFi crypto guys have all tried to launch real world asset tokens, but they've had to pull them down because they didn't do it properly and they didn't get licensed. They didn't run it. They didn't run the system properly. So now it's a 2.0 uh, of this situation um, where you have, Again, Coinbase building out Real World X Exchange in, in Abu Dhabi. We're talking to them on multiple different fronts because they're in, investors in our company and Coinbase Asset Management and, and the head of tokenizations and many, many different fronts. Um, but you also have PDAX, which is coming down the pipeline. There's some talk about these cryptocurrency exchanges. So PDAX is, is the first um, cryptocurrency exchange in the world that I'm aware of that secured securities license so they could legally sell RWA as well as crypto. But it's very focused on, you know, the treasury market and the bond market, which is, again, the opposite spectrum of us. So we have multiple discussions going with multiple cryptocurrency exchanges around the world who want to sell real world assets or already are, right? And for those that don't know, FTX, Binance, Bitfinex and others, they launched tokenized stocks in 2021. 2022. They just didn't have any licenses. So 
we've now had an iteration of all of that. And Coinbase invested in us in 2021, and we were hoping to do a lot more with them earlier. But they've been under attack with the SEC for so long. They've been, they were even forced to start their first reward asset platform out in Abu Dhabi. Um, I'm sure they would prefer to have started it in New York. Um, but again, it's all promising and positive. Those relationships are nuanced. There's a lot to work through. Cryptocurrency exchanges have just spent the best part of three, four, five years, the bigger ones, getting licenses, getting some license, getting chased around the world. They know how hard it is. And it's only specifically for crypto. And every single asset typically has its own licensing. So if you've got a cryptocurrency license, you can't sell securities. If you've got a securities license, you can sell crypto. If you've got a commodities license, et cetera. So that's generally how it works, um, which is why we've just seen recently, as in last week, I think, Robin Hood stock company, stock uh, focused business uh, has, has put a bid to buy Bitstamp, right? And that makes a lot of sense because they want to see those crypto assets on their platform. Bitstamp has been around getting licenses, et cetera, been around forever. I've used Bitstamp 10 years ago. And that's not an endorsement either, but I've used Bitstamp, been around for a long time. Um, there's the convergence of the TradFi guys uh, are buying into launching, trying to get into more and more real world assets. Everyone from obviously BlackRock, which everyone knows about, Franklin Templeton, and there's a whole, there's hundreds and hundreds of companies behind them that, that didn't want to be first, they want to be second. So you've got that dynamic in play, and then you've got the Coinbases of this world and the PDAX of this world, and I'm not going to name a bunch of others, but they're the biggest ones in the world. They're all launching, working out, trying to launch, how do you get these real assets on the platform? And the reason that's pretty simple to understand is because when you have a big audience, I think Coinbase push 110 million, you want to sell them more things, right? And so they've already got Bitcoin, they've already got altcoins, and they've already got stable coins. And what's next is the bigger universe, and I'll say that again, the real world asset tokenization industry far bigger than the crypto asset because it's all the real world assets. It's just bigger, not to say anything negative about crypto. So the bigger universe of assets is now coming in the right format, which is tokenized on the right rails, i.e. public blockchains, not private chains. And that's even why BlackRock and, and Franklin Templeton have all completely flipped 180 uh, and said it's all about issuing real world assets on public chains to connect with the power of crypto decentralized finance other platforms and essentially create much much bigger distribution channels um and distrib and, and that whole is starting to play out now so all that is very exciting so the the the, the updates that have come down kind of just a bit of a, a wrap up is an insane amount of product being developed teams just been pushing super super hard obviously um, marketing and, and Gene and team, um, that there's more and more um, clients who have signed up to launch real world assets on Axel, like real clients that have launched tokens. We've actually launched tokens. And if you love real world asset tokens and you love the space, go and find out which platforms are real and what if there's anything that you can really buy and go and buy it. And, you know, they're the ones you probably should be supporting a lot more of. But all these new product developments, LBPs, Base come down pipeline. We've got, you know, we're funding. We we have the most exciting real world assets in the world. I'll say that, and I'll I, I debate that with anyone. You know, you've, we've got tokenized funds. We've got startups coming down pipeline. It's a world away of interest and excitement than treasuries, which are good. Treasuries and money market funds serve a good part of the ecosystem. They're not really for us, and they're not for anyone in our community. So we've got the best, the most exciting RWA assets. We've got um, new structures coming to the LBPs. We've got. Um, the protocol integrations coming, we've got a, a whole bunch of other stuff um, and, and things are absolutely pumping. And, and of course, that's being reflected, I guess, in in um, the performance of IXS, which we think we're still just sort of getting started. We are, the last thing I'll say, I'll pass the mic back to Aaron. We are speaking to, um, you know, one or two, you know, a, a couple of the very top crypto exchanges about some new listings. Um, that, just as a side note, um, that has not necessarily resulted in better performance for tokens that have listed on Binance and Coinbase this year. Um, it's meant to, but it hasn't. But there's also, I think I just saw research, six 600% more, six times more tokens in market today than there were two years ago in the last kind of cycle. Um, so there's a lot more noise and a lot more you know crappy projects and a lot more competition for eyeballs. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that we are focused on on getting on um, one or two of the top tier ones. It's very, very expensive, um, insane costs related to that. And with all of this meme coin mania, 
there's a lot of random projects that are paying insane amounts of money um, because they've got nothing else to do and they don't have any products to build. So that is the reality. So it's very competitive. It's very expensive and the exchanges are not uh, 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 asking for a lot of money. And there's a lot of noise and competition to get there. But, you know, I think we offer a very, very important strategic value to crypto uh, exchanges in terms of being able to help them on the RWA side, which nearly very few people on the planet can say that. So it's very strategic. We're hard at work there. I know everyone wants to see more listings. We want to see more listings. We've, we've got to also balance the cost of these listings and the results and also getting the listings. But um, it, it's, uh, I think volumes and all of that related to access has been very, very strong. And most of that is, you know, on the Uniswap, which is, which is can't be manipulated. So, I mean, our volumes are um, very much a lot more real than um, a lot of other projects out there that are wash, washing like crazy on, on exchanges. But again, that's just solid projects. And um, I think that's probably everything I can think of today. Aaron, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, maybe we can actually go through some of the questions that the community had. Um, I think we've covered quite a few of the questions over the AMA already. Uh, first couple of questions were on base, which we've covered already. Um, and then I think someone asked um, our SaaS services, how, how are we partnering with centralized exchanges and how are we integrating with them? Um, they're, they're two different, well, they're two different paths that we are we're actually taking right now with the SaaS development. Uh, one path was what I described to you guys earlier, where there are is, uh, well, the is, groups of asset managers or issuance companies uh, that want to issue multiple assets, they're coming directly under the IXS uh, so sort of launchpad and decks, um, and, and the layout is going to be exactly the same. Um, the other approach that we're taking right now is that we are actually looking at some, working with some of the centralized exchanges um, to help them legalize their sort of back-end infrastructure for RWAs. Um, and this is to allow them to actually issue RWAs on their platform. Uh, this is still, still early days, um, and we've been in discussion with them for, I guess, a couple of months already. Um, and then this, this is still going to last, I guess, quite a while. Uh, before anything comes to fruition, but there, there is that that path that we're taking right now, where we are trying to build out funds. We're trying to build out um, legalized channels for the centralized exchanges to issue RWA assets. Okay, so that's on the, the SaaS platform. Um, let me see what else. There. Uh, developments, uh, someone asked another question again on developments in the USA. Um, the team has, has not really, I guess, been actively looking for um, alternative uh, white labeling partners in, in the USA. Uh, that said, there was an interesting development, I guess, this month. Um, there was a team from the USA that actually flew down to Singapore um, that actually wanted to have a chat with us to discuss potential JV um, of using our tech to, to, to be, well, to basically go out into the US market and do the same thing as what we're doing in Asia right now. Um, so that might be an interesting development, but again, that's that's not the focus for us right now. Our focus is actually building out the platform uh, for Asia and, and the rest of the world. Um, and if we do find an appropriate, I guess, US partner for this, um, we'll definitely be keen to bring them on. Uh, Jules, do you want to touch base on, I guess, any of the funding updates? Uh, I think we, we gave a couple of teasers and there are a couple of questions on this one on the AMA as well. Um, what number is this? Community questions. Mm, okay, cool. Well, so, yeah, we, we've, we've been um, looking ahead at our roadmap product development. Um, we've been... Um, Keep, you know, obviously keeping a tight um, eye on our burn rate. Um, the other thing that has uh, been a reality in our industry over the last five, six years is most people who um, raise a lot of money died. Uh, there's one or two left, but uh, that certainly was important to try to control costs as much as anything throughout the, you know, the unknown ups and downs and all the fun stuff with COVID and cycles that we've been through. Um, we have secured some recent uh, equity investments. Um, uh, Spartan was one name out there. I think we're, we're waiting on uh, uh, just confirmation of 
uh, another a couple of other brands that we will, that we will mention. Um, there's been VCs that have sent money. There's been bank um, bank venture capital, um, very very big bank. So um, that's committed uh, in the bank. Uh, you know, we've got some very interesting discussions. We're really looking at strategic uh, investments. You know, um, predominantly now focusing on the DeFi side. Uh, we do have a mixture of TradFi, DeFi, uh, LPs on our on our um, cap table. Um, we're really looking not just for money. We're looking for distribution partners, um, origination partners. Who's going to help us build the the platform out in the capacities of either Launchpad or Accelerator or AMM? So, yeah, we're hard on that. It 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 has. It's been fundraising in general for startups, um, again, not talking token sales, has been probably the worst in nearly two decades. So outside of blockchain, just in fintech startups, the fundraising has been a bit of a disaster. Um, and so, um, and then, you know, a lot of the blockchain uh, investor community, if you will, uh, are just solely focused on tokens and, you know, um, pumping and dumping tokens, regardless of what, what is said. So, yeah, we'll continue to have those discussions. That's quite a quite a a, a frequent inbound. Um, but there's a few target companies we're speaking to. We plan to. We're in no rush to do this. We plan to, you know, make announcements as they come out. Um, but you know, whatever we announce is real. Um, and hopefully, these guys can help us build the business. Uh, apart from, um, you know, raising more capital. Um, most of our focus now is on product development and sales. Um, as we roll out throughout uh, the rest of this year, at least. Um, so that's that one. What number are we up to here, Aaron? We've got another five, six minutes. We've actually <laughs> covered most of it, except for the last one. But maybe, Gene, you might want to give some updates on the marketing side. I thought you meant the last one. It says, how soon will the token value reach $15? Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the last one. We should end on that. <laughs> um, you know, no one wants to see that more than we do. That's my only answer. I don't <laughs> have another answer for that. Um, yeah, Gene, why don't we roll it back to you if you want to uh, share some of the latest and greatest on your side. You should definitely be doing some talking. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you guys have been noticing, marketing has been a lot of activity uh, for iXS. Um, we just want to start quickly. Why Philippines and why Korea? Well, we went down to the Philippines um, last month, and it's been great because iXSwap always markets itself as it's decentralizing access, you know, for all investors to private markets. And it's never been more apparent than it is now. Um, starting with some numbers for CKGP, with those 400 investors, 90% of those users were actually users that invested $1. So it just heightens the narrative that iXWAP is sticking true to what it is that's trying to do, which is bridging TradFi and DeFi. And it's never been more apparent in markets like Philippines and Vietnam. And another thing that I want to touch upon is why South Korea? Well, you know, iXWAP being the first mover in the space and getting its license early, it's one of the advantages is because a lot of these South Korean issuers are actually coming to iXWAP now is because we're the only ones with a global retail access, uh, license to actually get them on a platform and get their assets and their um, token ROA issuance to actually gain a global market, a global retail audience. And it's never been able, that's something that we've, they've been trying to circumnavigate. And that's something that is a solution that only iXWAP can offer. And that's something that we've been pushing on. So if you guys have been noticing, that's something that we will be announcing and that we have been announcing. And that's something that I think, um, a lot of people are so interested in is what you know k contents and why that why that is because the market and the demand for them is growing and the solution that well the problem that they have is how do they get more of these you know global demand to actually come in and invest into these contents and what they have and the answer to that is ix swap so that's a lot of the reasons why we've been heavily into these markets because you know we are actually basically a lot of what we're building is the solution to a lot of their problems and for marketing updates, um, it's really going to be interesting for Q3 um, because, you know, a lot of our users have actually been telling us, like, we, we want to provide you guys with more activity, more incentives, and a lot of more things to do with iXWAP. And that's definitely going to come down the pipeline, and it's going to come down relatively soon. So you better, you guys better stay um, in touch for that and stay active in our channels, and we'll definitely get you guys up to speed on what's going on once we start rolling out those updates. 
but yeah, a little that's a little briefer on the marketing that we've been doing. Um, uh, that's a little bit, a uh, little something for me. I guess I uh, pass it back to you guys for closing remarks and we can officially um, end the session. Yeah, cool. Um, Aaron, after you. You know, I, I think we've covered quite a fair bit today already. Um, so I guess thanks, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, stick around. Um, there are going to be a lot of updates, a lot of uh, developments on IXS. Uh, and hopefully we're going to see a large, large push um, from the KOLs and I guess the, the marketing team in the next couple of months. And we'll hopefully get over our all-time high soon. <laughs> $15 soon, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, not allowed to say that or you get yelled at, but yeah, $15. Um, yeah, I think... Um, I think thanks thanks for everyone taking time really appreciate and the support um we do have um, a lot of stuff cooking and we do have a, a new um wave of, of, of call it marketing partners who have joined us um there's a lot of interesting uh there's a lot of interesting uh products and projects that are coming down the pipeline um if you do uh know of any uh startups that are looking to raise uh money with an equity token send them our way if you know of uh, existing RWA assets or projects or products. They want secondary trading. They don't have any. Send them towards the team. Um, we're, we're excited to see how we can help everyone. We will help we, we will help every single RWA out there in the world create liquidity for them for their own projects if, if we can get it up and running, you know. So um, thanks for the support. Super excited about what's coming down the pipeline. Um, stay tuned. And thanks, Gene and team, for putting all this together. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming in, and we'll see you in our channels. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.